Hey everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video I want to talk about probably one of my most favorite mechanisms in organic chemistry. Here we are going to start with this spirocyclic uh, diepoxide, and we are going to make some sort of aromatic compound as our final product. Now, pause this video now and try to figure out what's going on here, and once you're ready, resume the video and we'll talk about this mechanism together. One hour later. You ready? So let's look at it. Well, first let's start by redrawing our starting material here. Here we are looking at an epoxide and we know that epoxides are very electrophilic and they can easily react with different nucleophiles and open. As a nucleophile here we have cyanide, so I'm going to draw that as well. And typically when it comes to epoxides they react with the nucleophiles from the less substituted side. Well, this molecule is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which side of the molecule I'm going to attack, so let's say I'm going to attack the closer one, so I'm going to attack that atom with my cyanide, opening up my epoxide, making a new carbon-carbon bond between my carbon over here and carbon of my cyanide. That going to give me the following intermediate. Now, an important thing here to keep in mind is that we still have an epoxide right over here, and right next to this epoxide we have another nucleophilic center. So now we can have another epoxide opening, but in this case this epoxide opening is going to happen intramolecularly, so within the molecule itself, where my oxygen going to attack the inner carbon of the epoxide opening it up like so. Now, you might be wondering why we're not doing the opening of the epoxide from the less substituted side, just like we did in the previous case. Well, let's look at both possible products here and see why the one that I have indicated with red arrows is actually going to get us somewhere and the one that I'm indicating with blue arrows is kind of a dead end. So, the outcome of my red arrows is going to be this molecule and the outcome of my blue arrows is going to be this guy. Now, the the only thing that at this point the blue molecule can do is either attack our epoxide back, leading us back to the initial intermediate, or another thing that it can do is open our epoxide like so, literally bringing us to the result of the red arrows. So even if the attack that I'm describing here with my blue arrows does happen, it still eventually at the end leads me to the same intermediate where I have a carbonyl in the middle and the cyanide on one of the ends of my molecule with the O- on the other end of my molecule. Okay, now I have my alkoxide intermediate. Awesome. What next? Now, it's going to be a little bit easier to see what's happening next if I redraw my molecule in a slightly different conformation, like so. And I am also showing the carbon-nitrogen triple bond here because that part is important. Because what can happen here is the intramolecular attack on the carbonyl like this, giving me a five-membered ring. And how do I know that I'm going in the right direction? Well, I know that the final product in this molecule is supposed to be the aromatic molecule, so we're definitely looking at something cyclic, and, well, this is a cyclic intermediate, so probably we're going in the right direction. Whether that's correct or not, well, we're going to see in a moment here. Now, I have formed a very basic species, and since we're working in the aqueous conditions, that basic species needs to be neutralized. So I'm going to use water here as the source of my protons, so I'm going to show the water molecule, and I'm going to quickly grab the proton from this water molecule, giving me the following neutral intermediate. Now, the important thing here to notice is that we have a couple of hydrogens over here between two uh, carbon to heteroatom double bonds. We have a CO double bond over here and we have a CN double bond over there, which is somewhat similar to a carbonyl, which going to mean that these two hydrogens that I just drew in between those, those two hydrogens are fairly acidic, which means that we can easily pull one of those off, and since the water molecule that we have just deprotonated has formed the OH-, the chances are that OH- didn't go far and we still have it floating around. So I'm going to show my OH- over here and I will use this OH- to pull one of these protons off, making the following fun-looking enolate. Now, this enolate is very well stabilized by resonance, so I can show the structure 
or I can show a different resonance structure where I have my minus all the way on the nitrogen. So if I move my electrons like so, the other resonance structure will look like this. Now, from this point, we are going to do another proton transfer, so I'm going to bring another water molecule, and now I'm going to use my new resonance contributor over here to show the proton transfer protonating my nitrogen, giving me the following neutral intermediate and the OH-, minus, which we have just reformed from our water. And at this point, we can see that our molecule is just one step away from being aromatic. The thing is, if I take this part of the molecule and close the conjugation there, I am going to end up with the aromatic ring. So what I need in this case is to just remove one of these two hydrogens to complete the chain of conjugation and we have aromaticity. And luckily for us, we have OH floating around. So that OH is going to come in, grab one of those protons like this, giving me a negatively charged intermediate. Now, this intermediate is fully aromatic, because if I look at my ring over here, I have a cyclic, planar, fully conjugated systems with six electrons in it, so it is going to be an aromatic system, and the only thing that is left for me is just to get rid of the negative charge on this oxygen, and I can easily do so by protonating that by bringing another water molecule around, or just reusing the one that we have literally just made, pulling that proton off, giving me my final product. So, see, told you, this mechanism is crazy and I absolutely love it. Did you figure out what's going on there, or did you get lost somewhere in the middle of the way? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me that by hitting that like button and leaving me a comment below. Your likes and sharings and comments really help in promoting these videos so more students can see them. Subscribe to the channel for more organic chemistry awesomeness, Watch this video next and I'll see you next time.